Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 19th of June and just a few updates this week, so we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. As always, like and subscribe is appreciated. Also, as always, I have the chapters down the bottom of the video, so you can jump to a particular update you care about more than the others. New videos this week. I did a video all about the new Azure Monitor log types. We're used to the idea of the analytics logs where I can, yes, ingest data in, keep it for a period of time, and I can run those fantastic KQL queries against it to get insight into the data. That is also basic and archive. So depending on my requirements, depending on what interactions I need, there are now different options. So I go through what they are, and then I did a video all about Azure Functions for the IT admin. So I don't have to be a developer, but these are still super powerful for when I just need to be able to maybe run some script, some piece of logic based on some event happening, which could be a schedule somewhere. Well, I'll show you how we can do that with Azure Functions, maybe at no cost at all. On the networking side, so Azure Application Gateway now has private link support. So Azure App Gateway is that layer seven load balancer set of capabilities. It has a public IP and optionally, it can also have a private IP. Well, now what I can do is I can have private endpoints. So that private endpoint can be in any virtual network, which will then go and communicate to that front end IP address. The Azure App Gateway itself deploys into a certain virtual network, but now with those private endpoints, they could be in different subscriptions, even in different Azure AD tenants. So now, I, hey, I can consume whatever's behind that Azure App Gateway really from something in any other virtual network. And because it's a private endpoint, i.e. an IP address, any network connected to the network with a private endpoint can consume it. it could be a peer to net. It could be on-premises via Express Route Private Peering or a site-to-site -site VPN. To use this, I do have to set up a new private link configuration, which I use a new subnet. So it needs another subnet because it's from that subnet, it will use the IP addresses that it has to use for the natting that is part of private endpoints. Now I get about 64,000 concurrent TCP connections per IP, so that subnet likely doesn't need to be super big unless you have a really large scale use of that Azure App Gateway. Now, once I've got those private endpoints set up, I could just disable the public IP that's maybe normally used for the App Gateway if I wanted to. Azure WAF policy and distributed denial of service management in Azure Firewall Manager is now GA. I talked about this before. Azure Firewall Manager is that great centralized place to manage the policies I would use for Azure Firewall. Well, now it's also bringing together the policies for the web application firewall and DDoS into that same Azure Firewall Manager that gives me that great central management and enables that larger scale set of capabilities. Express Route Direct and the circuits I create on it can now be in different subscriptions. So this is in preview. Remember, Express Route Direct is all really for larger customers and instead of going through some provider where I create a circuit of a certain size, with Express Route Direct, I get a pair of ports, I get a lateral authority, I connect my routers to the Microsoft Enterprise Edge routers, two ports, so I've got resiliency, of a 10 gigabit per second or 100 gigabit per second port pair, so I get that speed of each. Then on top of that, I create circuits of varying sizes. Well, in the past, those circuits had to be the same subscription as the Express Route Direct resource itself. Now they don't have to be. Now I can actually go and create those circuits in different subscriptions. They can even be in different Azure AD tenants. Basically, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to create an authorization on my Express Route Direct resource that I then consume when I create the circuit. This is really designed to help, hey, I want to be able to, yes, deploy the circuit in a different subscription or tenant, really focused around maybe circuit configuration separation or maybe billing separation. So this is why they've now got this ability to separate it over different subscriptions. Again, that's not going to apply to most of us. Most of us do not have Express Route Direct. Azure Virtual Network Manager is now supported in additional regions. So it's nine new regions, taking up to 20 in total. 
The whole point of the Azure Virtual Network Manager is many times we have multiple virtual networks and we might create peering connections between them in various configurations, hub and spoke, maybe a full mesh, whatever, because I need connectivity. With Azure Virtual Network Manager, I tell it the topology I want and it goes and manages and creates those peering connections for me. So I don't have to manually worry about all of those. It also has a concept of a security rule. We used to network security groups that I can apply to a subnet and it can control the flow of traffic. Well, this has its own construct that sits above NSGs that can override any NSG behavior. So now I can centrally say, hey, I want to have these particular security rules. I'm going to prohibit this type of traffic and I can't override that with a lower NSG. So it lets me set certain rules um, through this Azure Virtual Network Manager. On the database side, so Azure Data Explorer now has various connector automations. So if I'm thinking about Power Automate, Logic Apps, Power Apps, those very citizen developer type scenarios where it's easy to create those various pieces of logic I want to do, well, I can now use those very simply with Azure Data Explorer. There are now native Azure Data Explorer actions. I can do things like run a KQL query, run a, a command. So I could have a logic app that, hey, I run a KQL command against my Azure Data Explorer. Those results come back and they can continue flowing through my logic app to perform other types of actions. Maybe send an email, send some alerts, send it to a different type of store, whatever I want to do. So I'm getting all of the power of those various automate solutions against my Azure Data Explorer. So it's just some nice built-in connectors. Miscellaneous, so Windows Admin Center in the Azure portal is now in preview for my Arc-enabled infrastructure. So we're used to the idea, I'll just sort of show where it is in the portal super, super quickly. So in the portal, if I was looking at a VM, you have this Windows Admin Center. So this is this nice way to manage our Windows servers without having to install, hey, a whole bunch of code or agents or complicated things. It basically wraps it all in the web because me full manageability of my servers. Well, now what I can do in preview is if I've Arc enabled, remember Azure Arc takes that Azure control plane and brings it to other resources, including OSs. So now if I've done that Azure Arc enabled infrastructure, I can use the Windows Admin Center, providing it's Windows Server 2016 or above, and actually through the Azure portal, leverage it. So now I take just in the portal, I can, through that web-based experience, manage my server. I don't need any public IPs. There's no exposed ports required. It uses a reverse proxy. All I have to have is an outbound HTTPS to certain fully qualified domain names from my OS to be able to use this. When I light this up, um, it really just, just deploy that endpoint resource and then the Windows Admin Center agent, and I'm away. And that's it. I told you it was a quick week. I hope that was useful. Until the next video, take care.